up in his jewel green arrow star. There were some roaches mixed with loose coins in the cup holder, melted plastic sort of climbing out of the top rim. He popped out the cigarette lighter that we always managed to burn ourselves on. I lit up and was trying my best not to think of anything. Brad. Brad, that motherfucker. I couldn't really hear him. The crossover was blaring and shaking the window I rested my head on. That EPMD tape has been stuck in the player for four months now. Abby's place. Jacob was sweating and twisting his metal grinder in his hand. We hovered by a coffee table with someone's cutesy cigar box stash open. Plastic bag with a half ounce of weed, eye drops, raws. Jacob liked... Jacob liked to focus on the things he knew, things he could control. Grace was standing there kind of looking up at me. Sweet, chocolate brown eyes popping out of her sockets, waiting for something. Some guys walked in with plastic bags from a corner store. They had cups, plenty of alcohol, cans of fruity stuff that ends up being the only thing people drink. I don't know why I'm here so early. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why. Hannah came over and was trying to shove a mason jar in my hand, lemon and orange sticking out of it. She had this intense grin on her face and was telling me about some new mixing spoons, maybe it was plates, that she'd picked up from the farmer's market. Someone passed Hannah a bong and she took a hit before sipping the wine choked in her fist. Grace took my hand and dragged me to her room, flicking on the air conditioner along the way. Old dorms and apartments messily pieced together. I remember helping her move once. We sat on that mattress that was shoved up against a corner, music from outside pounding my ribcage. She starts telling me about Alan Ginsberg jerking off in a church. She starts telling me about getting railed, She starts telling me about getting railed in an alley behind the library. She starts telling me about how Nietzsche's sister gave him a bad rap. She starts telling me about the tabs in the freezer that may or may not still be good. I stared at the floorboards until they blurred into one big brown strip. 6 a.m. I woke up. I heard the curate gurgling and coughing up some coffee. Reminder, by a filter. I poured a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch and sat across from some chick who pretended I wasn't there. I grabbed Trent's pack of camels and went out to the back porch. Cups and cans were all kind of mixed with the grass and morning dew. Some ash fell between my feet while I watched the sun start to climb over our neighbor's roof. I didn't have any plans for today. I didn't want any plans. The burn in my throat felt good. I took an orange and ate it before doing push-ups in my room. Trent knocked and walked in with a towel wrapped around his waist. Your girl woke me up. Who? The girl downstairs. She woke me up. Must be with Kelly. Thought her and Hannah were still together. Guess not. I sat on the edge of my bed for a while, trying to think of what to do next.